All right, so let's see what that journal entry looks like in T-Account. So you've got the sales revenue here, $1,500. And the sales discount, if you notice, was a debit. Oops. Let me undo that. Your sales rep discount was a debit of $30. So what you're really doing is you're looking at these two things in conjunction with one another. It's really sales revenue of $1,500, and if you notice that's credit balance, and is offset by sales discounts of $30, which is a debit. So really they work together. Um, to go back for a second to this income statement, sales revenue is not just sales revenue. Sales revenue has actually a number of different components. It really is sales revenue. This is it. Get rid of this. Sales revenue minus any sales discounts. and actually minus sales returns and allowances, which we'll discuss in a minute, gives you net sales. From there, it's net sales minus cost of goods sold gives you that gross profit number. Okay, so it's not just as simple as sales revenue. If you've given discounts, then those have to come into place as well, and they're captured separately. If you remember from previous lessons, I've always said that no matter what, sales revenue is always, always, always a credit, whereas expense, revenue is always a credit, expenses are always a debit, right? So if sales revenues are always, always, always going to be credits, then if somebody has a discount, you can't credit that account. And if somebody's got a sales return allowance, you also can't credit that account. This is why you keep these separate accounts here called sales discount and sales returns and allowances. And what they are is they're contra accounts to sales revenue. That means they work against them. Um, the balances are opposing balances and you keep them together. So it'd be sales revenue $1,500 minus sales discounts of $30 would give you net sales of the $1,470 that the actual sales would it wound up being. Okay? And let's get back to these journal entries. So if they paid you within the discount period, there's your 2% discount. Okay. Now let's say they did not pay you within the discount period. They simply owed you $1,500, so not within the discount period. Let's say they just simply owed you $1,500. They paid you on like day 29. Hopefully they paid you before the 30 days was up. And they paid you on day 29. Well, then you, they don't get the discount. They just have to pay you the full amount of $1,500. So it would simply be a debit to cash of $1,500 and a credit to account receivables of $1,500. Okay, nothing really complicated there. So now let's talk about sales returns and allowances. Sales returns... From now on, I'll just probably write, I'll shorthand it, but for here I'll write the whole thing out. Sales returns and allowances. Now, what if you've made a sale and somebody returns it? Because they do, because people return things. All right, so say you have made your $1,500 sale and somebody sent it back to you. Okay, no big deal. Let's record the sale. Let's record, this, record the sale return. Basically, what's going to happen here is it's almost going to be a perfect reversal of this entry. The only thing that's going to differ is going to be you're going to have to debit something but you can know you can't debit sales revenue because that's a no-no so what you're going to debit instead is sales returns and allowances so you're going to debit sales returns and allowances for the fifteen hundred dollars in this case they're returning the full amount now they don't have to return the full amount maybe they only return ten dollars worth of product that's fine you would just record the part of the product they return but just to keep it simple I'm going to show you the entry as if they returned everything. So you've got a debit to sales returns and allowances. You're going to credit their accounts receivable because they no longer owe you the money now. Now they're you're get, sending it back to them. Uh, they're, they've just sent it back to you, so you've got to take the receivable off the books. The other part of it is you now have to record the inventory coming back to you. I'm going to move that up a little bit. You're going to have to record the inventory of the $1,000 coming back to you, and you have to get rid of the cost of goods sold because you no longer sold the product. It's now going back on your shelves. Okay, so the same way you had a two-part sales entry, you're going to have a two-part entry when you return a product as well. All right, so with that, let's just say they returned the whole thing, they didn't pay you for anything, 
and let's go back to this window for a second okay so this didn't exist anymore we're not even worried about the sales discount let's just say the whole thing is we had a sales revenue of fifteen hundred dollars and now people return the product they returned it for fifteen hundred dollars oh that didn't work the way I wanted to um, so your sales revenue at the end of the day would be sales revenue of fifteen hundred minus sales returns and allowances of fifteen hundred and your net sales number would be zero okay same thing they work against one another and you'll see this in multiple homework problems how to deal with this All right. so this is the sales returns and allowances All right. there's only one other sales related journal entry that i want to mention and it's related to, kind of separately but um... well actually two other journal entries that i want to mention um, one for credit cards well, when you're shopping in a store, if you're the merchandiser, um, every time that somebody comes in and pays with a credit card, you have to pay the credit card company a small percentage of that. So if we're Target and somebody comes into our store and spends $100, well, some small percent, and they use a credit card to charge it, some small percentage of that $100, I have to pay out to the credit card companies. Well, unfortunately, it's a necessary evil of doing business. So when you have a credit card, um, that's being used you're going to have some sort of small expense that's related to it so credit card fees are sim a very simple journal entry I just wanted to call them out to you and let you know they exist you would just simply have a credit card expense for some amount of money Oops, that didn't work and you'd have a credit to cash of some small amount of money also okay that's the simple entry for a credit card now, the one other one I want to bring up are sales taxes. All right, if some in New Jersey you've got a 7% sales tax rate, so you've got to account for that somehow because if somebody comes in to your store, sales tax, if somebody comes in, well, state sales tax, well, that's it, right? Um, if somebody comes into your store and they buy something, they're, let's say they bought something back to that $100, they paid $100 for something, they're not going to pay you $100 if it's taxable, they're going to pay you $107. Well, that $7 is not yours. That $7 is in this state, uh, it is New Jersey's money. So when you have this sales tax situation, what you're going to do is you're going to collect cash of $107 and you're going to have sales revenue of $100 reflecting the product that you just sold and the other piece of it is going to be a sales tax payable. Now how often you pay New Jersey or pay the sales taxes back out, I don't know what that is. Um, monthly, weekly, daily, I'm not really sure. But ultimately you're basically holding on to that $7, it's not yours, so you're setting up a liability account, a payable, to pay that money to New Jersey when you have the chance. Okay, and that's pretty much it I want to say for the for this side of the equation. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about purchases. So see me on the next set here.